the nightly business report good evening tonight the asian development bank approves a 100 million dollar policy based loan with a technical assistance grant in to water supply and sanitation sector reform Despite global economic challenges, the Sri Lanka Export Development Board remains confident in meeting its export target for the year. The chairman expresses optimism about reaching this ambitious goal. We are on line to achieve this ambitious target of 16.3 billion US dollars from exports. Following a day of surprising gains, the Colombo Stock Exchange ends the session with mixed results. And AI giant OpenAI is reportedly in talks to raise funds at a staggering valuation as a move that would solidify its position in the global market. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Asian Development Bank has approved a $100 million policy-based loan with an $800,000 technical assistance grant linked to water supply and sanitation sector reforms in Sri Lanka. The global lender has announced a significant initiative aimed at enhancing Sri Lanka's resilience to climate change and promoting long-term sustainability. The reform program is designed to tackle the challenges faced by the country's water supply sector, which is hindered by fragmented management and exacerbated by climate change impacts. The water supply and sanitation reform program, valued at 200 million and divided into two sub-programs of 100 million each, is set to address both governance and sustainability issues within the sector. The comprehensive program will improve mechanisms for ensuring access to safe water and encourage private sector participation in water resource management. ADB highlighted that Sri Lanka's water resources management faces several long-standing challenges, including imbalanced allocation between agriculture and drinking water needs, insufficient consideration of climate change in planning and development, and the involvement of multiple agencies at both national and regional levels. Additionally, issues such as unplanned land use and deforestation further complicate the situation. Despite the turbulent global economic landscape, the Sri Lanka Export Development Board remains optimistic about achieving its ambitious export target of over $16 billion for this year. Speaking to the Nightly Business Report, EDB Chairman and CEO Dr. Kingsley Bernard expressed confidence in the country's ability to reach this goal, driven by new initiatives and strategic adjustments to boost exports. As per the Export Development Board's 2023 forecast, $5.16 billion is to come from apparel and textile, while $1.39 billion from tea, $988 million from rubber and $753 million from coconut-based products. Sri Lanka's export sector has shown resilience despite these challenges during the first seven months of 2024 with the total export earnings registered as $9.13 billion, reflecting a 5.86% year-on-year growth. Uh, Sri Lanka Export Development Board uh, using scientific methods and looking at past trends and also consulting the export community, exporters. We have set this year's target as uh, US dollars 16.3 billion. At the end of seven months, by July, we have achieved 9.13 billion US dollars. That shows that we are in a position to achieve our annual targets despite many difficulties. Unless very drastic happens in the world, in the world such as wars or any other thing, we are on line to achieve this ambitious target of 16.3 billion US dollars from exports. Uh, this year uh, we have launched uh, many programs in order to achieve these results, especially uh, during the first six months or five months uh, our apparel exports came down. As a result of that we have launched number of programs, especially in uh, major markets. USA, we participated in a trade fair uh, and in UK, we staged a roadshow promoting our apparel and also 
we have another program called GTEx with the Switzerland government. So, these three events helped us in increasing the government exports, in fact, bringing it to the level they were there. And we work collaboratively with the JAF Joint Apparel Association Forum and also uh, SLASA who helped us in these endeavors. Sri Lanka has hosted approximately 1.4 million foreign tourists from January to 8th of September so far this year, according to Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority data. In the past year, the tourism sector experienced notable fluctuations, with February recording the highest influx of visitors. This peak month was followed closely by January and March, each of which also saw impressive numbers, attracting over 200,000 tourists respectively. The primary sources of these visitors were countries such as India, the United Kingdom, Russia, Germany and China. Each of these nations contributed significantly to the influx of tourists, underscoring the diverse and international appeal of the destination. In total, last year saw a remarkable 1.5 million tourists visiting the region. Even though tourist numbers in Sri Lanka is on the surge, the country's tour operators are witnessing a spike in cancellations as the ongoing visa delays frustrate tourists. Stakeholders state that this is threatening the country's tourism recovery. The provisional data from the Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority shows that the daily arrivals this month ranged between 4,000 and 4,800. However, the industry insiders warn this figure is at risk of falling if the visa issues aren't resolved swiftly. The two operators stated that they are already reporting a surge in cancellations with older tourists who often prefer easier, more streamlined visa processes opting for other destinations. The issue lies with the manner in which the on-arrival visa approval process has been rolled out. Unable to secure the visas ahead of time due to the online visa system not functioning, international visitors have to wait in queues for up to 3 to 4 hours at the airport to obtain the on-arrival visas, leading to frustration and in many cases, cancellations. The industry has been voicing its concerns for weeks, calling for urgent government action to resolve the situation. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After a day of unexpected gains, the Colombo Stock Exchange closed with mixed sentiment. While the All Share Price Index dipped into the red, the S&P SO20 Index held on to its positive momentum. To get today's market update, we now join with Anjali Matthews, who is standing by from First Capital. Thank you, Nadi. So today the All Share Price Index fell to 10,567, continuing the predominantly negative sentiment of the previous weeks, and the index lost 8 points, marking a 0.07% decrease from the previous day. And on the other hand, however, the S&P SL20 index saw an increase, closing at 2,929, gaining 5 points and marking a 0.18% increase from the previous day. So the market overall was driven by a degree of uncertainty and volatility as seen in the as seen in the previous sessions as investors decided to maintain a cautionary stance amidst political uncertainty. The top negative contributors towards the all share price index were Sailinker Holdings, Hatton National Bank, John Keels Holdings, Cargills and Dialog Axiata. Turnover also saw an increase standing at rupees 1.1 billion to which the bank banking sector led turnover and was also followed by the capital goods and material goods sectors. The top gainers of the day include TESS Agro Non-Voting, CT Land Development, Mahavali Reach Hotels, and meanwhile the top losers of the day were Citizens Development Business Finance, Sailinker Holdings and Hunas Holdings. 
Following the weekly bill auction yesterday, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka conducted a Treasury bond auction today. To get its outcome and insights along with the secondary market impact, we now connect with Zaim Ajihan from First Capital Holdings. CBSL conducted the first bond auction for the month, expecting to raise a large amount of 290 billion rupees. However, the total raised was only partially accepted. Accordingly, a 15-2-2028 maturity was fully accepted at a weighted average yield rate of 13.79%. However, a 15-6-2029 saw a partial acceptance of 146 billion rupees uh, from the total offered of 150 billion rupees at a weighted average yield rate of 13.98%. Uh, meanwhile, 15-9-2034 bond was completely rejected amidst the lower reception. Uh, so weighted average yield rates of the accepted bonds were recorded uh, below the 14% mark, indicating a positive sentiment in investor interest. Secondary market yields were on a continuous upswing over the last week uh, as investors were on a selling spree uh, amidst the increasing uncertainty uh, with the upcoming elections. Uh, however, today there was a slight reversal in investor sentiment with some willingness to buy uh, being observed in the market and with limited transactions 2027 and 2028 bonds including uh, today's auction maturity 15 to 2028 saw some trades uh, during the day Gold prices rose in Asian trade today and remained in sight of record highs as traders bet that the yellow metal will still benefit from a lower interest rate environment. Expectations for a large Federal Reserve interest rate cut faded after higher than expected August inflation data, leading traders to anticipate a smaller 25 basis point cut, which strengthened the dollar and slowed gold's rise. Spot gold rose 0.2% to $2,516.88 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.1% to $2,544.55 an ounce. Spot gold was trading just below a record high of $2,532.05 an ounce after coming within spitting distance of the level earlier this week. Oil prices increased by more than 1% today, continuing their recent rebound due to concerns about Hurricane Francine's effects on U.S. production. Despite these gains, a subdued demand outlook limited further increases. Brent crude futures for November climbed 1.4%, reaching $71.62 per barrel, while U.S. crude futures for October rose by 1.5% to $68 and 31 cents per barrel. Both contracts had surged by over 2% in the previous session driven by the shutdown of offshore platforms in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico and disruptions to refinery operations along the coast following Hurricane Francine's landfall in southern Louisiana yesterday. Today, the Sri Lankan rupee has experienced a slight depreciation against the US dollar, as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Currently, the buying rate for the US dollar stands at 296 rupees and 41 cents, while the selling rate is 305 rupees and 69 cents. Despite this depreciation against the US dollar, the rupee has shown appreciation against a range of foreign currencies, including those from Gulf countries. We will look at the exchange rates of the Sri Lankan rupee against other major global currencies. A short break now, this is the Nightly Business Report.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Intellect Design Arena Limited, a global leader in financial technology, has launched eMac AI, a platform designed specifically for Sri Lanka's financial sector. With 329 microservices, 535 events, and over 1,757 APIs, eMac AI helps financial institutions in the country develop advanced future ready solutions, giving them a competitive edge on the global stage. This platform keeps the bank's customers in focus, be it retail, HNI, SME or corporate, and the events in their financial journey besides taking care of events created by banking operations or generated by regulatory and compliance mandates. eMac AI simplifies technology for Sri Lankan banks, empowering them to create solutions that are not just optimized but transformative. Its composable architecture aligns with the financial sector's future needs, ensuring that banks can meet evolving customer expectations while remaining resilient in the face of rapid technological change. It enables them to develop strategies centered around customer needs, focusing on creating substantial business impacts rather than optimizing technology. Sri Lanka is at a pivotal point in its digital transformation journey, and the launch of eMac.ai in Sri Lanka comes at a time when the fintech innovation is rapidly reshaping the financial services landscape globally. Key trends such as the rise of digital payments, AI-driven banking solutions, open banking frameworks and cloud-based infrastructure are redefining how financial institutions operate across the world. Sri Lanka too is witnessing this shift with a growing focus on digital transformation to improve financial inclusion, streamline operations and create customer-centric experiences. Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC has achieved a significant milestone by becoming the first bank in Sri Lanka to receive a license from the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka, enabling it to operate as a corporate finance advisor. The recent acquisition of a corporate finance advisor license by the Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC marks a pioneering achievement in Sri Lanka's financial landscape. This license, granted by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka, authorizes the bank to offer a broad range of advisory services under Section No. 188 of the SEC Act. These services include capital raising through equity and debt offerings, such as initial public offerings, secondary offerings, debentures and syndicated loans. Additionally, the bank will provide expert guidance on mergers and acquisitions, divestitures, balance sheet restructuring, strategy development and valuations. By expanding into a corporate finance advisory, Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC underscores its dedication to delivering exceptional value to its clients. This new capability not only enhances the bank's role within the financial sector, but also aims to foster growth and innovation in Sri Lanka's capital markets. Valuable Power Eratna PLC has signed a standardized power purchase agreement with the Ceylon Electricity Board for the development of a 10 megawatt ground mounted solar photovoltaic project at Dolahen Estate in Madhra. The agreement finalized yesterday marks a significant milestone in Sri Lanka's commitment to enhancing its renewable energy capabilities. Under this agreement, Valuable Power will supply electricity to the Sri Lanka's national grid over a span of 20 years. This solar energy project is set to attract an investment of approximately 2 billion rupees, reflecting a substantial commitment to the country's green energy transition. The project is anticipated to generate between 18 gigawatt hours to 20 gigawatt hour of electricity annually, contributing to a meaningful volume of clean energy to the national grid. This initiative aligns with the Sri Lanka's broader strategy to increase the share of renewable sources in its energy mix and reduce dependence on fossil fuel. By fostering such large-scale solar investments, the country aims to advance its sustainability goals, improve energy security and support long-term environmental stewardship. This project not only underscores the growing importance of renewable energy in Sri Lanka's energy strategy, but also demonstrates the potential for significant economic and environmental benefits. Sri Lankan Airlines proudly received the prestigious Gold Award in the Marketing Career category at the Pacific Asia Travel Association Gold Awards 2024. The accolade presented in Bangkok recently highlights the airline's exceptional global marketing communication efforts and reinforces its strong international presence and appeal. Sri Lankan Airlines has made a remarkable achievement with its campaign Colors of Jaffna 
which stands as the first marketing initiative by any Sri Lankan entity to exclusively highlight the island's vibrant northern region. Earning a gold award in the marketing career category at the Pacific Asia Travel Association Gold Awards 2024. The award ceremony held in Bangkok recently celebrated 24 outstanding travel and tourism entities from a competitive pool of 100 global entries judged by a panel of 23 industry experts. Colors of Jaffna is one of the most successful campaigns in Sri Lankan Airlines history, achieving a remarkable reach of over 14 million across social media platforms and generating more than 500,000 engagements. Samin the Pereira, who is the head of marketing at Sri Lankan Airlines, expressed his heartfelt gratitude for the support from the management, valued partners and his dedicated team. He emphasized that this accolade would not have been possible without their collective efforts. Pereira noted that their continuous endeavor to showcase Sri Lanka from a fresh perspective has been validated by this recognition from the industry. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today with technology shares tracking an overnight rally in market darling NVIDIA, while Japanese markets soared as a soft reading on producer inflation undermined hawkish signals from the Bank of Japan. Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topics indexes were by far the best performers in Asia today, rising between 2% and 3%. South Korea's Kospi rose 1.2%, while a 4.7% rally in Taiwan's TSMC boosted the Taiwan Weighted Index. Samsung Electronics Co. Limited rose 1% after the firm was planning global job cuts of up to 30% of roles in some divisions, according to media sources. Beyond tech, gains in Asian markets were much more subdued. Australia's ASX 200 added 0.7%, while futures for India's Nifty 50 index pointed to a middling open after the index retreated yesterday. All three major U.S. stock indexes closed higher with a boost from the technology sector, offsetting investor disappointment at an early morning inflation report, which crushed hopes the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates by 50 basis points next week. U.S. stocks closed higher on Wednesday thanks to a boost from technology stocks and despite inflation data that soured investor sentiment early in the session. The Dow added three-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 climbed 1 percent, and the Nasdaq gained more than 2 percent. All three indexes opened down after the Labor Department reported the consumer price index ticked up in August, in line with expectations. But core CPI, excluding volatile food and energy components, rose slightly more than expected, all but confirming a quarter-point interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve this month and likely dashing hopes of a larger half-point cut. Stocks on the move included NVIDIA, which added 8 percent. It was helped by a semaphore report that the U.S. government is considering letting NVIDIA export advanced chips to Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong spoke at a Goldman Sachs conference Wednesday, touting huge demand for the AI darling's next-generation Blackwell chip. GameStop shares fell almost 12 percent after the video game retailer said it had filed for an offering of up to 20 million shares and reported lower second-quarter revenue. The prior evening's debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump also played out in the market. Stocks expected to perform well under a Trump presidency fell, including cryptocurrency and blockchain-related shares, as well as the former president's Trump Media and Technology Group, which slumped 10.5 percent. Meanwhile, solar stocks, seen as benefiting from a Harris administration, rallied, with First Solar adding 15 percent and Sunrun up more than 11 percent. AI heavyweight OpenAI is in talks to raise funds at a valuation of $150 billion, a move that would fortify its status as one of the biggest startups in the world. OpenAI is in talks to raise a lot more money. 
A report by Bloomberg says the ChatGPT maker is aiming to get $6.5 billion from investors and $5 billion more from banks. The deal would reportedly see it valued at $150 billion. That would be up almost three quarters on the figure earlier in the year. OpenAI didn't respond to a request for comment on the report, but the deal would cement the firm's status as one of the world's most valuable startups. The frenzy sparked by ChatGPT has shaken up the tech sector and global stock markets since it was launched less than two years ago. A fresh capital injection would also allow OpenAI to stay private for longer. That is something most hot startups now aim for, avoiding market volatility and the regulatory costs of a public listing. Abundant alternative sources of funding, including private equity, have further dimmed the appeal of share offerings. OpenAI has also been able to rely on strong backing from tech titan Microsoft. Recent reports have claimed Apple and AI chip champion NVIDIA could join any new fundraising. Samsung Electronics, a global leader in smartphones, TVs and memory chips, is planning to streamline its operations by reducing its overseas workforce by up to 30% in select divisions, according to sources familiar with the situation. This strategic move reflects the company's efforts to adapt to evolving market conditions and optimize its global operations. Samsung plans to cut up to 30% of its overseas staff at some divisions. The world's top maker of smartphones, TVs and memory chips has told subsidiaries worldwide to reduce sales and marketing staff by about 15% according to two sources. They said it has also called administrative staff to be reduced by up to 30%. One source said the plan will be implemented by the end of this year and would impact jobs across the Americas, Europe, Asia and Africa. In a statement, Samsung said workforce adjustments conducted at some overseas operations were routine and aimed at improving efficiency. It said there are no specific targets for the plans, adding they are not impacting its production staff. Official data showed Samsung employed 267,800 people as of the end of last year, with more than half based overseas. A source said the so-called global mandate on job cuts was sent about three weeks ago. The cuts come as Samsung grapples with mounting pressure on its key units. Its chip business has been slower than its rivals in recovering from a severe downturn in the industry and profits at the unit hit a 15-year low last year. In May, Samsung replaced the head of its semiconductor division to overcome a chip crisis. It aims to catch up with smaller rival SK Hynix in supplying high-end memory chips used in artificial intelligence chipsets. Samsung also faces tough competition from Apple and China's Huawei in the premium smartphone market. It was not immediately clear if Samsung will also cut jobs in its headquarters in South Korea. Job cuts could stir labour unrest at home and one source cautioned it could be a politically sensitive issue. A South Korean workers union at Samsung Electronics recently went on strike for several days demanding higher wages and benefits. Shares in Samsung Electronics traded at their lowest level in 16 months on Wednesday. Well, that is it from us at the Nightly Business Report for the day. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest business and economic updates. Until then, I'm Nadi Balasurya. Thank you for watching and have a good night.